The Mice and the Moon On the doorstep of the old creaky house, there were sitting two hungry mice, Pip and Chip. They were sitting wagging their tails and looking at the moon. The moon is probably very tasty. It's a shame we can't reach it, sighed Pip. Tasty? How do you know that? Asked Chip, surprised. The moon looks exactly like a wheel of cheese. It even has dark spots, which must be the holes. And most importantly, I noticed a while ago that someone has been eating this cheese bit by bit all the time. The other night, it looked like a big round wheel of cheese. But last night, it became a smaller slice. And today, it's getting even smaller. Right, I've also noticed that. I know who's been biting into this cheese bit by bit. It must be the bats. Bats, every night you fly away from the attic. Surely it is to eat the cheese. We would also like to taste this wheel of cheese from the sky. Bring us a piece, please. But the bats just shook their heads, or rather, swayed together. Since when you're hanging upside down, it's difficult to shake your head. No, it's not us. We didn't eat the cheese. Then Pip and Chip set off to see the wise owl. She definitely doesn't sleep at night. Wise Owl lived in an old tree hollow. Who bites into the moon every night? Who? The mice questioned the wise owl. Look, only half of it is still there, and soon only the rind will be left. But the bats didn't eat it. The owl blinked her eyes and replied, I don't know who eats the moon. Ask the astronomers. I'm going to have lunch now. But how can we find the astronomers? Just walk up the path. The mice were walking and singing a song, when suddenly they noticed two pairs of glowing eyes glaring at them. (coughs) Squeaked the mice. In the moonlight, two strange figures were standing right in front of them. Are you? Don't be afraid. My name is Zoo. One robot introduced himself. And my name is Zay, said the other. We are robot astronomers. We are here to observe the moon. And why are you walking here so late at night? Are you lost? No, we are not lost. We have been looking for you. We want to know who bites the moon every night, bit by bit. Look how thin it is! Zay smiled. Dear mice, the moon is actually very big. You can't bite into it so easily. The moon is the satellite of our planet. It spins around the Earth. It is very far away from us. That's why it appears so small. It orbits the Earth, and the Earth orbits the Sun. The moon itself doesn't shine. It just reflects the light of the sun. When the sun brightens the whole moon, it looks big and round, similar to a wheel of cheese. But sometimes the sun brightens only a part of the moon, and so it looks thin, and it appears as if someone has bitten into it. And when our satellite passes exactly between the sun and the earth, then we just see a shadow, a dark part of the moon not brightened by the sun. That's why it seems that the moon has disappeared. Wow, what a wheel of cheese. 
it is very easy to understand the motion of planets with the help of a Tellurian. A Tellurian is like a globe, but much more sophisticated and detailed. It displays not only the orbit of the moon around the Earth, but also the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. The Earth slowly creeps around the Sun. One circuit takes one year, 365 days. And the moon moves around the Earth very fast. One rotation takes 27 days and a bit. Right now, we can see that someone has bitten into the wheel of cheese. Right now, we can see the waning crescent. It will disappear in a few days. This moon phase is called the new moon. Next, we will start seeing a thin crescent again. If you draw a line by its left side, you'll see that it looks like the letter B. The moon begins to grow. As the crescent keeps growing, we will see the right half of the moon. This phase is called the first quarter. As the moon grows bigger and bigger, it turns into a round, full moon. From Earth, we can see the whole hemisphere lit by the sun. So this reminds us of a wheel of cheese. And what happens next? Soon after the moon starts to shrink, less and less of it is brightened by the sun. And in a few days, we see only the left half of the moon. This is the last quarter. Day by day, the moon gets smaller, as if someone would bite off pieces of it. Finally, it becomes very thin and resembles the right part of the letter D. The moon descends. This is the way we see the moon from the Earth during 29 days. Now I can remember all the moon faces. <laughs> what is this? Asked Chip. This sophisticated device is called a telescope. It helps us to see the moon up close. To see it closer? Chip wondered. Do you mean to fly closer to it? Not exactly. We will be bringing the moon closer to us with the help of optics by zooming in. You can see much more by looking through the telescope than by simply looking at the moon with the naked eye. This magnifying device enables us to examine small details on the surface of the moon as if we were flying right up to it. I want to look through the telescope! exclaimed Pip delighted as he ran up quickly to have a look. I can't see anything. There's only fog. A telescope is a sophisticated device designed for astronomical observations. You need to know how to use it properly. Zay focused the telescope and invited Pip to look through it again. Wow! That's awesome! What massive spots on the moon! Hurry up, Chip! Have a look! These are the Lunar Maria, the Lunar Seas. All of them have their own names and are plotted on the lunar map. The names of the Lunar Maria are very Earth-like and easy to understand. The Sea of Moisture is not a big lunar mare, and its bed is covered in solidified lava. The Sea of Clouds has a very beautiful name. It was named by an Italian astronomer more than 300 years ago. A small lunar mare with rills at the bottom was given a very dreadful name. The Marsh of Epidemics. We can also see the Sea of Islands, whose bed is also covered with solidified lava. All of the Maria run into the ocean of storms. Do the lunar fish swim in the lunar Maria? Who lives there on the moon? No one lives there because there's no water. The Maria can be walked upon, but no one does that as the moon is uninhabited. Humans have already sent expeditions to the moon, but no life was found there. Water only exists at the bottom of the deepest craters on the moon, in the form of ice. Craters? 
What are the craters? Can we see them through a telescope? Can we see the lunar ice in them? Let's have a look. The visible side of the moon has a lot of craters, and they also have names like the Lunar Maria. One of the biggest, the Kepler Lunar Crater, was named in honor of the scientist Johannes Kepler, who discovered the laws of planetary motion in the solar system. The middle-sized Copernicus Lunar Crater was named in honor of the Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus. On the northwest border of the Sea of Moisture, there is the large and ancient Gassandi Crater. The old crater in the south is named after the Danish astronomer Christian Severin Longomontanus. The Clavius Crater is one of the most ancient craters on the moon. It's more than 4 billion years old. The Bay of Rainbows and its surrounding mountains are the most famous and give the most impressive views of the lunar landscape. And from the Earth, the craters on the dark side of the moon are invisible to us. But why? Chip wondered. We will observe them when the other side of the moon turns to us. The moon's movement has its own specifics. Our satellite never turns to face us with its other side. We can only see one side of the moon from the Earth. Only if we get in a spaceship and fly around the moon, and after landing, will you be able to walk on the dark side. So the dark side of the moon, with its huge number of craters, can only be seen on the pictures made by artificial satellites. So, with the help of artificial satellites orbiting the Earth, every lunar crater has been mapped accurately. Wow! I wish we could go to the moon! exclaimed Chip and Pip in unison. All in good time. And before that, my dear mice, you should learn more and discover the moon from here on Earth. And now, in the dead of night, it's high time you went to bed. Shall we also look at the stars for the telescope? <sighs> Surely, another time. But now, you ought to go to bed. The stars flickered mysteriously in the sky, and the moon seemed to wink at the mice. And one of the stars even appeared to wave to Chip. Oh, he yawned again. The mice headed back to the old house with the attic, the bats, and the most ordinary cats ever. The mice fell asleep and dreamt of a yummy round wheel of cheese. Mmm, all through the night.